Hello, I am Miss Pink, uh, which I'm called because I have pink hair. Uh, I am on a mission to bring some colour, pattern and curated collections to people's homes. Miss Pink is leading the way. The homemaker from London believes you can never have too much of a good thing. When it comes to decoration, for her, more is more. So this is my colourful palace and colour makes me happy. So a key thing with the maximalist movement is mixing, mixing colour, mixing pattern and bringing together a lot of objects. Um, behind, up, up there we have bottles and there is not just one, not just two, there's like 22. So rather than be um, tame, I take it to the max. She shows off her ideas for maximalist home decor on social media. The internet plays a big role in spreading this trend. It's me. This is an extension of my mind. Social media, it's a visual tool and people can see your um, ideas and your interior. One person can see it, 2,000 people can see it, people in Russia, people in New Zealand, people in Australia. It's, it's very instant. And Ms. Pink's in good company online. Hello, I'm Abigail Ahern. I'm a designer and a retailer, and I am pretty obsessed with interiors, particularly interiors that decorate differently in a very maximalist type way. Also based in London, Ahern's trademarks are dark colors, extravagant accessories, and a wild mix of materials. When I moved in about 18 years ago, the house didn't look anything like this. It was very white and very plain with virtually nothing in it. When you have less, you come in, it looks lovely, it's pared back, but you're done, you've read it. Whereas here, my eye's over here and then it's over here and oh no, that's cool and it's over there. And it feels really engaging and exciting. And that's why I'm so obsessed with this whole maximalist more is more thing. So even if Abigail Ahern's home looks a bit cluttered at first glance, there's a system behind the chaos. In my world, there's so many do's and don'ts. And for me, there's three key tricks in pulling this off. So basically, don't use more than three or four colors in a room if you're using so many things, because otherwise it just is too schizophrenic for the brain. The second component in creating a really maximist space is playing around with scale, because what I'm trying to make you do is put things that are too big in spaces that are too small. For example, a really big mirror on quite a small wall or a chandelier that's big, 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 hung quite low over a table. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want the space to feel magical. The third component is texture and pattern. So it's kind of three and four because texture and pattern totally transform a space and make it feel incredibly cocooning. And the real trick with texture, firstly, is that every texture has to oppose the one it's next to. I do think it is not a trend. It's not a trend. I think more, it's a difficult look to pull off and people are scared of doing it, but I'm, I see it gaining momentum. I don't think that you can feel completely happy when you have one table, a few chairs around it and a load of white paint going on. Um, that would be amazing if Bauhaus could just literally go and Scandi minimal could go. And if more is more and maximalism could stay for another 100 years because I think if we all embrace more is more, we would live in a happier place. The designer hopes to get others excited about maximalism. At this shop in the north of London, you can purchase her designs and get tips too. What's for you? What's your, what's well, your I mean, for me, you know, I'm totally obsessed with lighting because lighting right. literally transforms a space and it's one of the quickest things that you can do to make anything look wonderful. Mm. So there's lots of chandeliers like this that kind Beautiful. of just also feel very kind of wow. tactile. Sure, so I love this contrast as well. Just, you know, the more you fuse and mix, the, the more there's a really interesting dynamic between the very yeah. kind of pretty and the little bit more masculine. Sure. It's constantly making it feel quite, 
you know, fractious, which is kind of a weird thing in interiors, but the more friction you kind of create, the cooler I Absolutely. think a space looks. You're creating this really happy space. So I get such a kick out of people coming in and they immediately smile and that immediately makes me happy because it lifts the spirits. And that's what interiors should do. They should make you feel happy in a place that you never want to leave. Design expert Emily Henson is finding increasingly more shops that have subscribed to the more is more style, like this one. Owner Zoe Anderson has gathered extravagant accessories from around the world. Show me some new stuff. So we've just got these um, heads in, and um, I kind of think these are quite special because each one's unique. They've been handmade by a tribe um, in um, Cameroon. What's the base? Is it wood? So it's wood. Wow, so it's carved it. wood and it's covered in clay. Brilliant. And then let me show you these. Look. Oh, those, I saw these. Oh, you have them here when, when I came in. <laughs> Zoe takes ordinary things and makes them extraordinary. And I think it's about taking those things that we just take for granted as being ordinary, but actually every single thing in your home can be extra, extraordinary. Emily Henson has even published a book entitled Be Bold to give people the courage to make their homes more extraordinary. So I had noticed a, a change from neutral, tasteful, almost like Scandinavian style interiors towards more colorful, patternful, bold homes. I think maximalism is about breaking the rules. I don't think it has to be good taste. I think it has to be your taste.